Hello everyone, I am back and I am ready to get rolling onto this channel. Thank you for being so patient with me during my temporary hiatus as I was going through some personal events in my life. Um, but now that I have returned, I am ready to continue Sally's face. I can't wait to finish this game, um, create the analysis, and play more games for you guys. So didn't forget about you all, um, and I'm ready to start this next chapter. So um, last I checked, we are just starting episode three. So just going to play this from the beginning. Yes. Is this real? Am I dreaming? White room it's ni um Oh wait, I think this is backwards. Let's see. Don't forget what I told you. Find me in the white room. You see that? All the letters are backwards except for white room. Okay. I feel smart for figuring that out. Okay, maybe not this so much. Others ought to place... Oh, wait, 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 okay. Something, something, something. Something, something. But you must not speak of this place to others. Wonder what the d n e ed you something something here something something all. Oh. You know what I tried. Okay, I see these four symbols here. Looks like there's this hexagon one with six triangles at the top. Um, I am reading a walkthrough, at least for part of this, so I want to make sure that I have this down before I move on. So there's, looks like one bar for this first symbol. The second one has two bars. It's this rectangle kind of shape with couple different shapes and a third one looks like it has one bar and there's that uh, almost trapezoid looking shape and that last one another rectangle's got three bars um, yeah so let's see here we have to just memorize where the placement is okay um, Yeah, okay. The only one who believed you is dead now. I don't know how I figured that out, but that's what I think it says. What should I do? Is he trying to say run? Huh? Run! Run! Oh, shoot. Let me get out of here. Uh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, ah. Okay, I'm definitely trying that again. I think that's it. Enter? Phew. I don't know how I would have figured that out without <laughs> without the walkthrough. Like, I, I definitely would have died so many times. But, um, yeah, okay. Apparently this next one is going to be another puzzle. So I'm just going to brace myself. And if you see me attempt it again, it's because I probably died the first time.
the truth is? Nine, eight, nine, seven, three, six, 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 six. Okay, so this looks like another part of it. I can see some zeros at the top. I don't know if you see that. There's like six sets. I think these digits correspond to those up top. Okay. Am I able to pause this? Okay, yeah, I can pause it at any time. So nine, eight, seven, three. Okay. Okay, so he just gave the first part. Oh, he's looking more like a person too. Well, anyway, so it looks like he gave the first part in that first sequence, and then there's the second part in this sequence. Okay. All right, so I might have to just like put these numbers in. Um, in some order. And this one is fading. You must hurry. Okay, where the heck am I? Six, two, six, nine? Yeah, 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 that one. And then... I think that was one. Okay. Okay. And then here's the next one. Nine, six, seven, five, three, nine, six. Is it getting darker? Or is that just me? Three. And then nine, six, eight, seven. Okay. Nine, six, eight, seven. Okay, I think that's it. Ooh, I did it. Ooh, okay, yeah. So in case you didn't follow along, the phantom in that first part was showing parts of the code in two parts. And when I had, um, materialized in this room. I started off on the very rightmost portion. So those zeros at the top that you saw corresponded to the zeros that were above that phantom. Um, so pretty much what I needed to do was just go to each set of those buttons that you saw at the top and then just type in that code from right to left. So again, not sure how I would have been able to do that on my own. I think I would have just skipped this whole part, especially just from that first puzzle. Um, but yeah, so, and then I think that X just meant that you can just reset that one section of the code. So, um, now it looks like I should be done with this part and just get the journal, but. Hmm. You must learn from my mistakes, Sal. We're counting on you. 73 hours left now. Be prepared. Is it true that you have chosen to forego legal help in favor of representing yourself? Yes. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> I loved how the microphone said they're part of faux news. Can you speak to your conviction of being an innocent man? Are you sticking with the story you've told the police? I will share the truth. Are you saying your original story wasn't true? I have no comment on that. Can you comment on this supposed person that allegedly killed your mother? How do you explain no witnesses or evidence of any such person? I don't see the relevance of that now. Is it true that they are going to add the Sanderson murder to your charges? That would be news to me. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to pin that on me too. And what about Charlie Mansfield? I have nothing to say about him right now, except that I did what I thought was right at the time. 
Okay, since we aren't getting any major details from you, let me ask you our highest polled question. The viewers are very interested in this one. Is it true that you are granted special meal privileges because you are afraid of bologna? I'm not afraid of lunch meat, okay? I just... well... it's a long story. Your trial is still a few hours away. I think we have plenty of time. Ugh. Alright. Episode 3, The Baloney Incident. What if I were more than just a doodle? Okay. This takes me back. Hello? Are you okay? S all right. What's wrong with your friend? Okay, I really can't get behind the text being directly in the center of this blue line. He sought the truth, and the truth destroyed his soul. Now, please leave us alone. Your head will frighten the children. Not the children. Can you tell me where your friend ventured to find enlightenment? He traveled to the wise prophet beyond the fields of death. But a round head like you will never make it. Okay, I'll take my chances. Oh no. Are you okay? What happened to your limbs? Whoa, I never. How would you feel if I asked you what happened to your weirdly shaped head? I, I didn't mean to offend, I was... Hmm, go bother someone, someone else. Okay, I'm sorry. It's another one. Hello, miss. Don't pay any mind to my sister. They do look alike, I can see the resemblance. She's been cranky lately because of the sun. It's no problem. Our ancestors were mauled by the great beast. Ever since, our people are drawn without limbs. What sort of beast could do that? We do not speak of such things. If you want to know more, you'll need to seek out the oracle beyond the death fields. Okay. Let's go see this oracle. Hello, are you oracle? Or are you great beast? Are you the great beast? Well, screw you too, friend. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Don't pay me any mind. My temper rises with the sun. The great beast hasn't been seen for over a hundred years. Do you know where the prophet is? You mean the crazy old hag who lives beyond death? Just take that ladder down. It's always a ladder down. Okay, my bads. I made assumptions. Oh, we've gotten to the crumpled part of the paper. Hello? You shouldn't have come here. Where am I? A dark place. Is this the field of death? Horrible things happen when the sun burns out. Hmm. Ooh, I remember these. Fortune teller. Uh, are you the prophet? I am called many names by the sticks. Do you know about the great beast? It crawled through the great hole many years ago. It ravaged the sticks for decades, then was laid to rest by a magnificent explosion in the sky. Most believe the beast to be dead, though we know better than that. What is the great hole? Eons ago, we created a great hole in the papery fabric of this world. A hole that contains all of the knowledge in the universe. How do I get there? What is the truth worth to you? Hmm. Everything. Uh, 
I don't know what to make of that last scene. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Fisher? Sal, wake up! Uh-huh. That doesn't look like math to me. Oh, oh, sorry. I must have dozed off. I already finished the test. I know, dear. You aced it as well. Just try to stay awake for the remainder of class, okay? Sure. It won't happen again. And Mr. Phelps, eyes on your own paper. Yeah, mind your business, kid. Turn your head around. Humph. Class is almost over. Make sure everyone hands in their tests before leaving. Hey, freak. Nobody likes a goody two-shoes Sally face. Nobody likes a cliche bully, Travis. Don't you have something better to do? Shut up. I wasn't talking to you. You know, if you took that stick out of your butt, you may actually enjoy yourself for once. Maybe even make a friend or two. Piss off! I have more friends than you'll ever have! You kiss your daddy with that tongue? I'm sure he... Oof. What the? You know what? I really gotta commend Sal for that clapback. That was impressive. Are you alright, Sal? I'm fine. Come on, let's report that jerk. No, don't worry about it. That'll just make things worse, trust me. I've dealt with bigger bullies than Travis before. Sal, you're bleeding. I'm okay, really. Here, let's use my bandana. Oh, wait, hold on, I- you can't, I'm- <gasps> She saw the face. There. Looks like it was just a small scratch. Don't worry, you can hardly see it. Ah, uh, thanks, Ash. Dude, what happened? Was it Travis again? That prick, I'll kill him! Larry, I'm fine, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Sal's right, if we stir the pot, it could just make things worse. Not if he's dead. Then he'll probably just haunt the school and we'd be stuck with that bonehead for the next two years. Ha, huh, says the group skeptic. You know I love you guys, but the ghost stories are a bit much even for me. So we're really just gonna let this Travis thing go? It's not worth it. Plus, think about it. Who knows what his home life is like? He's got a lot of pent-up rage. There must be a reason. These kids have a lot of depth. I'm pretty sure he's just angry that they switched bologna sandwich day to tomorrow. Huh. <laughs> Seriously, I've never seen anyone love the crappiest lunch day so much. It's like a prison meal, and he doesn't even like pizza Fridays. Who doesn't like pizza? It's inhuman. Maybe he's an alien. Huh, that's all we need. Larry, I'll help you kill Travis when Sal isn't looking. I heard that. I like this friendship. The next day. Baloney day. Oh. oh gosh. Whole milk. Not the whole milk. Does that baloney smell funny to you guys? I thought why last week's was a little off-putting, but it seems to be worse this week. I heard it's made from goat meat. Didn't a bunch of kids call in sick the day after Baloney Day last week, too? Wait, are these kids really wondering what's up with the meat? <laughs> Have they looked at the lunch lady? Aw, oh, hey you guys, don't ruin lunch for me, please. It's the only good part of the day. 
group huddle? I'm in. Me too. Count me in. Have fun. I'm going to stay here with Chug. We need to find out if there's anything wrong with this baloney. Maybe there was a batch of bad beef or it's expired or something. Or bad goats. I'm telling you, dude, this is funky. Doesn't taste like no beef to me. The product is most likely a blend of low-cost meat components from different sources of beef, pork, chicken, and or turkey. Todd, man, you're making my stomach turn. This is like the hot dog incident all over again. Ugh, I hope not. Sal might be onto something. There could be an issue with the lunch meat. I'd like to take our sandwiches to the science lab and see if I can find any bacteria or signs of expiration. However, it would be helpful to know what the exact ingredients are. Okay. Ash, you go with Todd and help him in the lab. Larry and I will try to get more information on the baloney. Sounds like a plan. Operation Baloney, go! Who are all the people we could talk to? Is Maple and Chug? Oh, uh, hi, Larry. Hey, Maple. Aren't you going to eat your lunch? My mom made me peanut butter and jelly again. I'm kind of tired of- I'm just kind of tired of it, you know? Uh, I mean, if you're not gonna- Of course you can have it, Chug. Heck yes! Aw, so wholesome. Oh, Travis. I thought I smelled trash. What are you flamers up to? Get bit, Travis. <laughs> Next time somebody annoys me, I'm just going to tell them to get bit. Don't you have some sandwiches to attend to? You're lucky it's baloney day. Okay. Oh, gosh. It's Kim. Hi, Kim. We wanted to ask about the baloney. Could you tell us where the school buys it from? Why, you want to know about baloney, eh? Something wrong with Kim's cooking? <laughs> That's just how the, the voice came out. I'm sorry. I'm sticking with it. No, no, no. We, we were just wondering where it- You kids, go and sit back to chairs now. No more question. Do you think we could just see the package, or- No packages for you. Just butts and chairs. Go on. Well, that was a failure. She always seems so unhappy. I wonder why she stays here. It's like the kids make her sick or something. Dude, what if Kim is poisoning the lunches? I don't know if this town has room for another conspiracy theory. Though, I guess it's worth looking into. Why don't you see if you can sneak into the principal's office to look at her files? While you do that, I'll check in with Todd. Alright. I see. I'll see what I can do. Is there more to explore? Just wanted to see if there was something beyond the lunch lady. Hall. A hall. Nope. It just, just, just leads to the same place. Okay. In boys' room, girls' room, lockers. It's locked. If I had a paperclip, I could get in. Side quest, get paperclip. Oh, this is my locker. A picture of us from Halloween. That was so fun. I'm lucky to have such great friends. I've had this backpack since I started going to school here. It's a little worn around the edges. Just some of my textbooks. Todd suggested I take physics this year and I'm actually enjoying it. The world we live in is fascinating and filled with mystery. We usually use paper clips to open our lockers. It's faster and we don't have to memorize combos. If I had a paper clip, I could get into the other lockers. Oh boy. The kid really wants his paper clip. Oh, is this back into the same yeah, just from the other side. Okay. Just checking. 103. There's a class in there right now. 
Oh no. What about here? Oh, it's Mrs. Packer's classroom, I guess. Ah, oh, yes. Good old school. Takes me back. Oh, would you look at here! It's a paperclip! Oh yeah, I sent this journal. An old worn journal that I found. Well, I can't remember exactly where I found it. The pages are torn out and I have a strange feeling holding this. Okay, I'll just... Need this. Today I lost everything. It's gone. All gone. I never imagined our world would end like this. There was no warning to the plague of shadows that invaded. The day began with a trip to the Sky Towers, alongside of Evelyn and her children. My company had been showcasing a new line of drifters, capable of bending space-time and traveling even greater distances across the galaxy. Evelyn was ecstatic and couldn't wait to pilot the new model. Standing at the exhibit, I turned to look at Eve, who wore this big goofy grin that was almost too large for her face. Her smile brings a familiar childhood warmth to my heart. She was the kind of soul anyone could ever know. She always found happiness, even in trying moments. Yet Eve's smile couldn't withstand the next moment. The events will be seared in my mind forever. A low rumbling noise muffled all surrounding sounds and was swiftly accompanied by the hideous screaming of the masses. As I watched the smile dissolve from Eve's face, panicked terror settled in my gut, mirroring the look of dread she now expressed. I turned to look behind us where she was now gazing. The shadows were seeping into the tower and had already taken many lives. Evelyn's two boys were across the room, staring down over the balcony rail at the chaos below. In an instant, they were consumed by the shadow. Eve let out a shriek so loud I thought my ears would burst. I had to hold her back from running straight into certain death. A difficult thing to do considering I also wanted to run to her boys. Yet it was clear that they were gone. I pulled Eve into one of the drifters and quickly made sure she was secure before taking off. As we smashed through the glass, the tall glass windows of the tower and then through the atmosphere, the shadows consumed the entire planet. There was nothing left, like some insignificant hole in space where our world used to be. I lost everything. We lost everything. I turned to speak to Evelyn, my mouth ajar but no words could form. Her warm spirit had turned cold and brittle. Tears were pouring like rivers down her cheeks, and her body was shaking uncontrollably. She's in shock. I pray that we can somehow survive this and that we can find somehow find happiness again. Okay. Thank you for going through that with me. Or maybe you skipped it. That's okay. I think that's all there's left to this classroom. Okay. Okay. I'm supposed to go down here. Oh, actually, wait. I'm supposed to go back to these here lockers. Oh. Um. Let's see. Let's take Ash's locker. Okay. Okay. I'm liking this. Oh, hey, that's me. I didn't know she had this in her locker. Some of Ash's photos. One is an older picture of her and Larry. I'm so glad I met those two. Can't see Clumpy? Ash makes these stuffed dolls. I think they're cool. She calls them little dudes. Ash's art supplies. Ash and Larry are such good artists. They try to teach me, but I'll never be as good as they are. It's okay. I have fun painting and drawing with them, and they never make me feel bad for not being good at it. Ash's Polaroid camera. She's always snapping pictures with it. This could come in handy. I'm sure she won't mind if I borrow it. Oh, heck yeah. We're stealing. We're thieving this. Okay. I think now we have to go down the hole. Okay, we've entered hall two. Now the science lab. This is where I should be f finding Todd. Instead I found Einstein. What's this? Ooh, sticky tack. What's... Okay. Gold chicken with Todd. Hello. 
You find anything? Not yet. Were you able to get the bologna ingredients? No, not yet. Where's Ash? She wants to get some materials for me. I recommend that she look in the janitor's closet. I thought she'd be back by now, actually. Alright, goodbye. Wait, you have a sandwich right there. You liar. Okay. So... Where do I go next? I just go in here? Oh, it's a class. Is there anything here? Oh! Uh, uh, hello, Ash! Be right back! I just totally didn't steal anything from your locker or anything. <laughs> like a camera or something. Oh, wait. How did you... How did I know you had a camera? Oh, wait. Huzzah! Oh my gosh, the ball is happy! Now I have a ball. All is right with the world. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to help Ashley. Um, yeah, but hold on. I'm supposed to talk to Larry now, but I wanted to see what else the courtyard has to offer me. I can't see them. They must be hiding. How about this window? The teachers are in there eating lunch. Bet you it's not baloney. Huh. Oh, hello. Any luck? The teachers are all in the lounge. I'm waiting for the right moment to sneak by. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go here. Let me use it. Hello, birdie. Because it's just- <gasps> Found it! Yay! Photo I took of a bird from the courtyard. It's a pretty bird. Okay. Maybe I'll distract the teachers with this. Huh? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came from outside. I don't see anything. Neither do I. Maybe it was just those darn birds again. Did it work? Did you get past? Yeah, good thinking with that distraction, dude. I saw her file. <laughs> How fast did you do that? The logic is not adding up. Awesome. Anything to help us? Well, I had to book it, so I didn't get a good look, really. If you can distract the teachers again, maybe I can just take the file? No, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves by stealing the file. Alright, you're the boss, Sally. So what should we do? Give me a minute. I'll think of something. Maybe I'll just give him the camera. <laughs> Here. Use Ash's camera to take a picture of the files. Great thinking, dude. Ready when you are. Okay. Let's distract these teachers again. Huh? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came out from blah 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 blah. Same thing. Did you get it? Dude, the file is missing! What? How can that be? No one else could have went in there without you seeing them. Heh. <laughs> Just jerking your chain, man. I got the picture. Oh, you butt nozzle. Haha. <laughs> Score. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I think I know what to do. I'll meet you back in the lab. Okay, what's it say? Kim Yazzie, birth, address, phone, hire date, position, lunch lady, education, GED, previous appointment, amateur nature photographer. Huh. Kim has elephantiasis. Elephantiasis. 
it's not contagious, and she's sensitive to it. Make sure the other teachers know. Tell Kim to stop feeding the birds in the courtyard. Other teachers getting annoyed. You got it, dude. Bye, Larry. Okay. I think I know exactly what to do. Oh, whoops. I got something for you. What's this? A photograph? Of Bertie? You take picture? Huh? Yeah, I took it for you. Just a small thanks for all the hard work you do. You're sweet boy, Sally. Thank you. So I was wondering, can you tell me where the school buys the baloney from? Why are you so interested in baloney for? Oh, well, my friends and I really like it and want to know where we can get some. It's local made by Mrs. Packerton. 100% beef. She brings from farm once a week. Here, I give you some extra meats for bringing Kim nice photograph. Thank you so much. Is this a conflict of interest? Can't be having the teacher just selling meat to the school. Okay. Up next, let's go in here. Check this out. Note? There's a crumpled up note on the ground. Looks like someone tried to throw it out but missed the garbage. Hmm. Couldn't hurt to take a quick peek. I know we don't really know each other and you probably have your opinions of me. I thought maybe if I told you how I feel, things could be different. The truth is, I can't stop thinking about you. I'm crazy about you. I think you're amazing. But I know these feelings I have are wrong. It's not the way a boy should feel. Shame swallows me whole, just writing these words. My father would kill me, but I can't live in this shadow forever. I just... Then there's just a bunch of scribbles after that. Man. What else is in here? Stall. Stall. Person. Check. Anyone in there? No! Duh! Buzz off! Travis? Were you just crying a second ago? Sally face? What? No, no! What? What? Can't a guy get some privacy? Oh no. Yeah. Call you eat pants, that's okay to have emotions. Why do you hate me so much? Hmm. Let's see. Let me go with the third one. Why do you hate me so much? Because you and your dumb friends are a bunch of homos. It's sick. It's not right. God will never love you. Why should I? You know, we aren't all actually gay, right? I mean, besides for Todd. Todd is super gay. But that's part of who he is, and I think it's wonderful. He's one of the kindest people I know. How could anyone hate Todd? Ugh! What? You don't even know us. Is your father pushing these beliefs on you? Stop being so close-minded. Just because my dad is a preacher doesn't mean he owns me. I'm my own person. Yeah, but... Well, you seem so unhappy, man. Are you sure your dad isn't putting too much pressure on you? I bet it's tough being the son of such an intense man. You have no idea what it's like. I'm sorry, man. Don't feel sorry for me, Sally Face. I don't need your pity. We don't have to be enemies, you know that, right? I think under all of that anger, there's a good dude who's afraid to be himself. If you ever need someone to talk to, if you need to get away from your dad for a while, you can hang out with me. What? Why are you being so nice to me? I don't think you're a bad person, Travis. You know, I don't really hate you. Or your friends. I didn't really think so. I guess... Well, I'm sorry I've been such a jerk. You didn't deserve that. That means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you. 
And what I said, and what I said about being here for you if you ever decide you want a friend, I meant that. Don't push your luck, Sally face. Oh, here. I was gonna flush this down the toilet, but I guess you can have it. I found it on your desk. It's an envelope with my name on it. There's an old journal page inside. Thanks. Okay, now scram so I can have my alone time. And, uh... What? Don't tell anyone about this or you're dead! Or, I mean, just don't tell anyone about this, okay? I won't. Ooh, buddy. We've been drifting through space for weeks now. The first few days are fuzzy, most likely from being in a state of shock. I forgot about this journal. Yet as much as I try, I cannot forget about the shadows. A constant fear persists in the forefront of my mind. Are they pursuing us? Pers- pursing us? Am I simply delaying our inevitable annihilation? Yet, if such darkness does exist, then perhaps there is some kind of opposite force that would shine kindly upon my sister and I. Evelyn still isn't speaking much. She's absolutely devastated. I'm not sure that she'll ever be the same again. If we even live through this. Earlier today, I'm almost positive that I saw a beacon on our radar. It was a brief flash, but if my eyes were not deceiving me, then that means we are in a range. We are in range of a habitable planet. It's a great distance away, so we'd have to use the remaining power in the drifter to make the jump. This is why I did not immediately act on it. However, our food cartridges are running low as well. We've got enough for a few days at best. So we either risk our lives jumping to a potentially, potentially habitable planet or we risk our lives waiting until our food runs out to see if we can find a better chance somewhere else. I asked Eve what she thought we should do. She's been silent for hours. I'm not sure that she... It blinked again! The computer's saying that it's not only habitable, but that it's also teeming with life forms and is over 70% water. Eve cautiously nodded her head in agreement. This is our chance. In a few minutes, we will make the jump. I'm sweating profusely and my hands won't stop shaking. This will either be the end of my life or the beginning of a new life. Both thoughts are equally terrifying. Okay, so, just read that, so let's go back to Todd. I wonder who wrote that note on the floor. Maybe it was Travis? Maybe Travis wrote the note and then just ran into the bathroom crying and couldn't, like, throw it away fully. Got more baloney. Perfect. Oh, sorry. Perfect. Kim said that it's made by Mrs. Packerton. Whoa, no way, dude. She lives in the apartments. How could she make her own lunch meats? Oh yeah, I forgot she lives there. I hardly ever see her. I've probably seen her in the building twice since I moved here. She tends to return at late hours. I believe that she keeps multiple jobs. Teachers don't get paid as well as you may think, so it's fairly common. However, when Mrs. Packerton is home, she makes quite a lot of noise. It's very peculiar. So, what do we do? Should we ask Packerton about this odd side business of hers? Or are you boys going to do your whole detective thing? Huh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Sal? Let's do a little snooping before going to Packerton. I don't like the way this is playing out. If something nefarious is going on, it'd be best not to let Packerton know that we're looking into it. Agreed. Good call, Sally. Alright. Why don't you and Larry go and check out Mrs. Packerton's classroom while the teachers are on break? Todd and I will finish testing this baloney. Exactly what I was thinking. Okay, we'll be back. Larry, I'll need you to be my lookout. Wait by the door in case anyone comes down here. You got it. Okay. 
Dang, she keeps her desk drawer locked. Do you remember how to pick the lock like I showed you? Yeah, but there's no keyhole. A combo lock? Man, dude, how are we gonna get that thing open? Let me take a look at it. Uh... Hold on, let me see if I... Oh. It looks like those first four numbers of pi are, like, kind of different than the rest, right? That square? Let's see. 3.141. Got it open! Nice one, dude. What's inside? Just a bunch of math papers and... Hold on. There's a hidden compartment. Man, there's some freaky stuff in here. What is it? Uh, I'm not sure. What the... <laughs> Little jars filled with what looks like spices. Maybe for cooking? Why does she have a bird skull in here? That's kind of creepy. It's a Bible. The book is really old. But there isn't anything special about it. A bunch of papers with random notes and symbols, symbols scribbled on them. Looks like they're written in another language. I can't make sense of any of it. A strange metal object similar to Jim's puzzle box. This could be important. I'm gonna take it, but let me just look at this. Crystals? They're actually kind of cool. I wonder what Packerton uses these for. I guess these are the only things I could look at. There's another one of these metal boxes. Like the... Dang. Is it happening again? Yeah, I... Uh... I... Dritters, flurry, and bustsome. Yeah, I don't think this is written backwards either. I'm s sub something, something. Are you sure? You could just be dehydrated. You didn't need anything for lunch either. It's done. Huh? It's already over. But never mind. Let's go check in with Todd and Ashley. Hey guys, we found some sketchy things in Packerton's desk. How are the tests coming? We're not getting any signs of harmful chemicals or bacteria. However, I think we can all agree there is something peculiar going on here. Whatever it is, let's not mention this to Chug for now. The poor kid almost had a heart attack when they stopped serving meatloaf. Yeah, Ash is right. Let's keep this under wraps until we know for sure what's going on. Well... I guess we know what we have to do now. Dang, I'm gonna miss this action again. I have to watch Ben until my parents get home. Maybe I can help out after that, though. Later that day. I'll need a few minutes to get it ready. That's cool, I have to take care of something first anyway. Okay, let's meet up in Todd's room once everyone's ready. Yes, perfect. Cool. Mm. Oh, let's get the mail. Henry Fisher, Henry Fisher, Henry Fisher, junk, junk. Oh, hey, Sal Fisher, there's a letter for me. Hmm. No return address on it. That's weird. It's a page from that old journal. It's been over a year since I arrived on this planet. In that time, I've been studying as much as I can about the local society, history, and general ways of the people here. Everything is remarkably similar to my home planet, which has made it easy for me to fit in. I managed to get a job at a local factory and have really been enjoying the music here. I took up the surname Johnson since my identifier Zerenth Gemp 4279 
would likely raise some suspicion. For a while, I would go out every day to search for Evelyn. In the beginning, I could have sworn I saw her in the apartment building multiple times. Eventually, I came to the realization that it was just my mind playing tricks on me. I was in mourning and had to overcome extraordinarily traumatic events. I will always miss my old life and my family, but it's best for me to focus on what life I have now. Focus on the good things. Lisa taught me that. She's been a great help. I may have lost my mind if it weren't for her. For the first time in my life, I'm in love. I've never felt such a strong connection to anyone before. The best part is that she feels the same way. What a bittersweet series of events this has been. I've been staying in her apartment for about five months now. Later today, I plan to ask her for her hand in marriage. It's similar to a union ceremony back home. She said yes! We had a wonderful night together. Everything was so perfect. Lisa is fast asleep now, but I'm too excited to sleep. Whoa, 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 what happened in this past year? Also, just got Johnson as a last name, but then Evelyn, the sister, had a normal first name? I don't know. Maybe they came to Earth. Anyways, okay, let's go back upstairs. Bum bum ba dum bum. Ba bum bum ba dum bum. Okay, back here. Now, dad's room. Mmm, look at this picture. There's something under the bed. It's... It's an old photo of mom. I thought dad threw them all away. Hi, mom. I miss you. I hope that you're at peace. There's a handwritten note on the back. Henry, you are my sunshine in the darkness. I can't believe we're going to have a little boy. I'm so unbelievably happy. Everything is perfect. Love you always, Diane. Very emotional. Dad's computer is on, but I don't know his password. Maybe I could figure it out? Henry Fisher. Type a username and log on to Wyndham. Ah oh, yes. Welcome to Wyndham. Okay, let's see. So it looks like from here... Okay, okay, I see. So it looks like the password is just the numbers corresponding to the mother's name, Diane. So, like, D is the fourth letter, I is the ninth letter, and so on. Four, nine, one, oh, whoops, whoops, four, nine, one, uh, N is 14, and then E is 5. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. 4, 9, 1, 1, 4, 5. Whoa. What? Did I just blow out the computer? Where did this come from? It's another letter with my name on it and an old journal page inside. Page 8? Part of me feels like I want to read these in order, but I'm so impatient. The old woman was the old woman that was the first to greet me in this world. Her name is Alison Rosenberg. Most call her Rose. This morning she told me a story of how she came to this place. If it's true, that would mean she is well over a hundred years old, possibly over two hundred. 
It doesn't seem very likely, considering the average lifespan on this planet is around 70. Rose requested that I meet her later tonight. She said she had something important to show me, and there was a sense of urgency to her words. When I declined, she clutched my sleeve and said there would be a dire consequences to denying fate itself. I pulled my sleeve free and walked away. I don't have time for this delusional woman's games, and I certainly don't believe in fate. Though, as I sit here with Larry, I'm starting to get a sinking feeling in my stomach. Rosenberg's words echo through my head. Why am I so haunted by foolishness? I need to avert my thoughts from such things and back to reality. Look how happy Larry is, playing his video game. He gets so mad at these little pixels on the screen and so elated when he finished a level. I wish I could show him the neural games of my world. He would have loved those. Anyway, Lisa should be back soon and I'm going to make us a nice dinner. Whoa, 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 wait, what? Is this... Is this Larry's dad? Who isn't a human? Whoa. I need these pages. Okay. Okay. I'm reeling a little bit, but we need to get back to the task at hand. Meet in 202. Okay. I have to take... I have to take this. And I have to take this. And I think that's it from my room. Sal's room. And let's go into the kitchen. Hello, cat. Let's read this note. Sal. I had to go back into work again tonight. I'll be home late. There are some leftovers in the fridge if you don't eat with Lisa and Larry. I'm sorry. I haven't been available much lately. Maybe we can go do something this weekend. Love. Dad. Thanks, Dad. Okay, let's go to the bathroom and then we'll be... Sorry, Gizmo. I didn't realize you were in here. Oh, okay. That was, um... Sorry, Gizmo. Sorry. Let's get out of here. Robber's place. Let's go right in. Interesting artwork. Okay. Yo, what up, little bud? Not much. Just a typical day. That bad, huh? Ha. <laughs> How have you been? Everything is straight, my man. I can't complain. How's business going? Business is great. What is it that you actually do? Sell crack cocaine. Okay. Oh. Ah! Nah, I'm just messing with you. Oh, my granddad passed. He left everything to me. Whoa. Was he a millionaire or something? Nah. But it was enough money to start up a little business. I had brewing in my old noggin. I tripled that money within a year. From there, the company just kept growing. Now I barely do anything. To show up once in a while to check in and do meetings and stuff. That's about it, though. It's a pretty tight gig. 25 and practically retired. It seems like you worked hard to get there, though. You better believe it. Busted my butt until things took off. Just wish my pops was here to see my success. I bet he'd be so proud of you, man. That's a huge accomplishment and not many people could put pull off. Thanks, little bud. What's with the safe? I don't trust banks with my money. Or any big corporations, really. Don't you own a big corporation? Well, yeah. But that's different. That belongs to me. Why do you live here? I mean, you could afford to live anywhere. Why live in this cheap apartment room with hardly any furniture? I got all I need right here. Why do I need a big old house filled with fancy things? Can't take that with you when you're dead, right? It's just extra weight weighing you down. I like to lay low, live my life doing what I like. Go wherever, whenever. No strings attached kind of lifestyle, you feel me? Yeah, I do. I think that's cool. I don't know what I do with what with what I don't know what I do with all my TV and video games though, haha. <laughs> ah! Well you gotta do you, little bud. Everyone's different. 
Okay, see ya. Oh, let me fix that for you. Hmm. I bet I could use the sticky tack to keep this poster up. It worked. Sick. I couldn't get that darn thing to stay up. Here, a quarter for your troubles, bud. Oh, wait. I realize I never helped... <laughs> I realize I never helped Ash back at the school. My pop was loaded and he used to give me a nickel for mowing his lawn. At the time, I thought he was just a cheapskate. But he was teaching me a lesson. Teaching me the value of working for it, you see? Yeah, I think so. Oh man, I feel bad. Okay, next up in here. I have to get all the journal pages, I must. I'm pressing shift. Okay. Yep, here we go. Hello, Sal. Hey, Mrs. Sanderson. How are you? I try to keep myself busy, otherwise I'll lose my mind. I fear that I'll never be able to leave these dreadful walls. You still haven't seen any bright light or anything? Unfortunately, no. I don't mean to sound ungrateful though, babe. It's much more bearable here without that horrible demon running around. It's just so... terribly grim. Devoid of hope. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm sorry. I wish I could help more. Todd and I have been doing a lot of research, but... Hold on a moment, love. Yes. Right there. Talking to me. Okay. Sure. Y yes, okay. I, I understand. I will. Sal, I meant to give something to you. Who were you just talking to? I apologize, sweetheart. I've got to go now. Please take care of yourself. B but Oh, the journal. It's an envelope with my name on it. It's one of the missing pages to that old journal. What was it? Oh yeah, page 7. A few years have passed since my last entry. For the most part, everything has been great. Life has its ups and downs, but overall it's mostly good. I'm working my way up in the factory. Larry is happy and healthy and so is Lisa. The three of us have a lot of fun together, and we have another baby on the way. This one wasn't exactly planned, but we couldn't be more excited. Aside from these bright spots in my life, I feel as though a darkness is lurching in from unseen corners. Something is wrong with this building. Things happen without explanation or rationality. Most people, most people here still believe in the concepts of gods and ghosts. They would call this building haunted. These archaic ideologies may hold some small trace of truth after all. Lisa claims she's never seen anything unnatural happen here and that it's just people's imaginations. This time, I'm positive that my mind isn't playing tricks on me. I have nothing but respect for Lisa's scientific worldview and how she, could she believe in such things if she's... I have nothing but respect for, okay. I have nothing but respect for Lisa's scientific worldview. And how could she believe in such things if she's never seen the proof with her own eyes? I don't hold that against her, but for now I'll keep my findings to myself. Okay. I gotta go into a few more rooms. Back to the elevator. Up to five. Gotta get to 501 for the next journal. Yeah, this is it. What's this? There's an old newspaper clipping nailed to the wall. It's about a boy who shouldn't be alive, who survived an accident that killed both of his parents. The front page of an old newspaper. Father and son go missing. It says they vanished without a trace, leaving the mother broken and alone in what was once a happy family's home woman and her child abducted by aliens. This has to be one of those joke papers. Oh, right, right. It's a letter. Hmm. 
This is page five. I'm having nightmares again of Evelyn. We're sitting in the drifter. I look over at her and she smiles. Then her smile melts away in a burst of flame that engulfs her body. I struggle to get my seatbelt off, but it's stuck. Eve becomes a charred corpse right in front of me, screaming in agony. That's when I wake up. It's the same dream every time. I'm starting to wonder if this is a repressed memory. Did Eve burn up when we made the jump and my mind simply blocked this out? If that's the case, why am I dreaming of it? It's unsettling, to say the least. The timing isn't so great either. Lisa and I are expecting a baby within a few months. I'm both excited and extremely nervous. Prior to the conception, I did extensive research into the biology of humans on this planet. I am no biologist, from, but from what could I could understand, we are of the same species. Well, I can't imagine that we are 100% exactly the same, but we are so close that I think this will be okay. I've even been to local doctors and had my blood tested and everything. Of course I didn't tell him that I wasn't quite from around these parts, but it all came up fine. This gave me an intriguing thought. Even though our solar systems are thousands of light years apart, could it be that the humans of our two planets share some kind of common ancestor? And if so, how many other planets are out there harboring human or humanoid life? Freaky. Freaky. Okay. So Larry is half alien, but still might be human, but just a different kind of human. So therefore half human and half alien human. I wonder if this is related to the skull in Mrs. Packerton's desk. I don't know. I think that's it. That's it for this room. Now 504. Let's talk to the kid. Hi, Sally Face. Hey, Megan. Have you seen my daddy anywhere? No, uh, sorry, I still haven't seen him. Oh. Maybe he's passed on to a better place. I guess that's not so bad. And everybody here isn't so scared now, too. Even Mommy started talking to me a little. That's great. I'm glad she's finally speaking to you. Me too. <laughs> I hope that daddy is happy wherever he is. I'm sure that he is. Oh, I forgot mommy told me she would play hide and seek. I gotta go. I'll see you later, Sally boy. Uh, okay, Megan, I'll see you later. Have fun. Interesting. But wait a minute, so Larry's supposed to have a sister? I don't remember hearing about this. Or maybe she didn't have the baby? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Gotta leave this way. Okay, next stop is the first floor. One oh three. Good evening, Sally. How are you on this fine day? Hey, Mr. Addison. I'm good. How are you? I'm swell, young sir. Any new tenants? I'm afraid not. Though we do have someone coming to look at a room next week. So hope is on the horizon, I suppose. I'm sure your luck will improve soon, Terence. And if there's anything you ever need help with, don't hesitate to ask. That's very kind of you, Sal. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Do you like the new sign? I love it. Thanks to you and Larry, it almost feels like I have my own little tea house now. I do miss giving out my tea to tenants. However, I simply couldn't afford to keep up with that. I'm glad you like it, and I think it's totally reasonable to charge for the tea. Everyone understands. That's wonderful to hear. Addison tea, please, and thank you. Coming right up, young sir. 
There you are. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay, here's the next room. Oh! Hello, dear Sally. You sound tired. Are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm quite fine. I was just a bit distracted by my thoughts, you know me. Did you finish that book you were reading? I did. You seem to be enjoying it. What's wrong? You, you didn't like the ending? Most story endings are a lie we tell her to ourselves to create a false sense of hope. What do you mean? There are no happy endings in real life, Sal. We all get the same terrible ending. Death. You can't know that for sure, Rose. And even if that were true, doesn't that make life even more precious? It's our one chance to shine as brightly as we can before the long night claims us. That's why I try to live the best life I can, just in case that's the only one I get. Not for you, my boy. Huh? Oh, never mind, child. I admire your optimistic view of life. It's something I had lost long ago, I'm afraid. It's quite the cheery one. <laughs> What? Miss Rosenberg? Hello? I did not know that would happen. Where are you? Miss Rosenberg? Uh oh. Goodbye, Rose. I get the feeling that you are ready for this, whatever it is. I hope that wherever you are, you're happy now. Huh? There's a letter here. Okay, now we have page three. I've never felt so utterly hopeless. She's gone. Just vanished. How is this possible? Where is Evelyn? The jump was a success, and the planet is beautiful. Filled with lush forests, fresh air, and small creatures for nourishment. Eve would love it here. One moment, she was right next to me. Then in an instant, right after the jump, she was gone. It's not possible. I just can't understand how this could happen. I've been searching the forest for days, hoping that there could be a chance she was here somewhere. Maybe when we warped, she... I saw her! She was calling for help, but when I started running and yelling her name, she fled! I lost sight of her, but have a good idea of the general direction she's heading. If there was a miscalculation in the drifter, I suppose it's possible that she was teleported directly to the planet. It seems highly unlikely, but I don't know what else would explain this. I have to find her and approach with caution. She could be in a traumatic state. Confused and panicked. I've come across a small town. Humans. Early civilized humans. The odds of this are astronomical. The drifter would have changed our world had it not be destroyed before they could, they went to market. I came across a small brick building. Standing outside was an elderly woman. She was the first contact I had with these people. She welcomed me as if she had been waiting for my arrival. Despite the kindness she presented, I could sense something hidden and dark, deep within her eyes. I felt uneasy around her, yet also a strong sense of familiarity, as if we knew each other in another lifetime. I'm not one to normally believe in such things, but the sensation was potent. The old lady invited me into the building, where she left me on my own. It was then that I met a younger woman, closer to my age. She was strong, kind, and beautiful. I was so overflowing with emotion that I broke out in tears. A normal stranger would have avoided a grown man making such a scene, but not this woman. She took me right into her arms. This only made my sobbing worsen. We went into her apartment and she sat me down, got me a blanket and some hot coffee. A long conversation was to follow. I of course couldn't tell her the full truth. How could I? I would sound like a lunatic and quite possibly find myself imprisoned or worse. I told her that I had lost my home and my family and didn't know what to do. She spoke with the owner of the building, a man named Terence Addison, and said that they had an extra room I could stay in on the fifth floor. She's a lovely woman, Lisa Garcia. So this Larry is half human alien and half Hispanic human. And I am for it. I am all for it. Okay. 
So we've got page three. Now we're going to room 202. I am all for it. Oh, Todd's parents. Ooh, is that Addison tea I smell? Yeah, I just bought a cup. Hey, would you mind leaving the tea with me for a bit? I just love the aroma. It's so calming to my soul. Sure, I don't really care for tea anyway. You're the best, Sally. Hey, you know what? I've got something for you. Here, I got this chocolate bar for my Todd, but he didn't want it. His loss, your gain. He. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Morrison. Thank you. Aw, so sweet. I got my chocolate bar. Okay. Third floor now. I'm just like running all over the apartment at this point. Okay, so, gave the tea, got the chocolate bar. Now I'm supposed to... Yes. Oh no, what's wrong? I keep hearing creepy noises. Like what kind of noises? You know, creepy kinds, like scratching and moaning and stuff. Maybe it's just some mice in the walls or the building creaking. It's an old building. Mice? That's not any better. I bet it's nothing. You wanna hang out with me and the other guys? No, no. It's okay. Thanks, though. I can tell you guys are up to something again. Last time I came with, I couldn't sleep for a week. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to tell you Megan said she's sorry for scaring you. She's very sweet once you get to know her, but you kind of bolted right when she came out. I know. I mean, I bet she's nice. I tried. It's just too scary. Well, if you don't want to be alone, you're always welcome to hang out with us. I know. Thanks, Sally Face. Why are you standing here? I'm waiting for my parents to get home. They should have been back already. Is there anything I can do? Got any chocolate? Chocolate always makes me feel better. Actually, yeah, I got this bar from Mrs. Morrison. Here, you can have it. Heck yes! Thank you, Sally Face. Oh, um, here, can you take this? It's Larry's game. I was borrowing it. I got all the way to the bonus level. You know, after you get wings. But it's too hard after that. Cool. Yeah, I can give it back to Larry. Okay, now I got this from Chug. So now I go in here. Just break right in. Hello? Is anyone home? Huh. I could have sworn someone lived here. Hmm. Oh yeah, another journal entry! Okay, and now at this time we got page six. Larry Johnson! Our perfect healthy baby boy. I'm still reeling from yesterday when our child was born. A large weight was lifted from my shoulders and joy came flooding in to replace it. I knew from the moment I saw him that I'd do anything for him. This is a life form I've created with Lisa and we both feel a tremendous, unconditional love for our boy. When we first saw him, we wept tears of joy. I hope we can stay this happy forever. I took the whole week off so that I can be here with my family. As I was putting little Larry to bed, something strange happened. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow that moved quickly across the room, knocking over a box of toys. Fear coursed through my veins. 
My heart was pounding so hard I thought my ribs could break. Flashbacks of my past flickered through my thoughts. The plague of shadows. My home world, Evelyn. Then I looked down at Larry's face and he smiled at me. It was likely just baby gas, but his expression calmed me down. He's safe. I'm safe. Lisa is safe. If the plague had followed me here, it would have destroyed this world long ago. It was just my eyes playing tricks on me again. I've been stressed out lately and haven't slept well in weeks. I must put these fears behind me. I have to be healthy and alert so I can be there for my family. They are my number one priority. Larry's dead! No! Okay, time to go to the basement. Oh wait, wrong way. Okay, oh. Flowers. Looks like Lisa got a bouquet of flowers from someone. There's a note. It says, get well soon. Wishing you the best. Henry. Uh-huh. Huh, huh, huh. Okay. Let's check out the bathroom first. I think... I think Larry is in there, hun. Occupado, dude. Oh, there she goes. Hiya, Sal. How are you today? I'm okay. How have you been feeling? Didn't the doctor say to take it easy for a while? Oh, I'm just fine, sweetie. Don't you worry about me. Besides, we've got problems with the plumbing that need my attention. Mr. Addison has enough on his plate to worry about. I can't keep lying around all day. Is there anything we can help with, at least? Dude, don't bother trying to talk sense to my mom. You know she's even more stubborn than me. Oh, hush, my little lair bear. Mom, don't call me that. Hee <laughs> hee, oh, you love it. Anyways, I appreciate your offer, Sal, but I can handle a little plumbing work. It's really no problem. Plus, moving around some will do me good, too. If you say so. Just don't push yourself too hard, okay? And if you need any help, let us know. You got it, bud. Thanks, Sal. What's wrong with the plumbing? There's some kind of goo clocking up our pipes. It's weird, the same thing happened a few years back, too. No idea where the stuff comes from, but once I get all the pipes cleaned out, we should be good to go. How's Mr. Addison? Oh, poor Mr. Addison. He's a console, but I'm afraid he's a bit of a frail man. With everything going on, we should do our best to keep him optimistic. He may put on an upbeat attitude, but he's so stressed lately that he's crying himself to sleep at night. You got any plans for the weekend? My dad and I might be going out to see a movie or something. Maybe you and Larry could come along? I bet it'd be good for you to get out of the house for a night. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. I would love to join. How's Henry doing, by the way? He's a sweetheart, your father. I hope he's not overworking himself. Cool. That'll be fun, and I know my dad will be happy to have you along, too. He does work a lot. I think it helps him cope with his depression. Though he seems like he's been making some positive changes lately, which I'm glad for. Oh, I know I've said this a million times, but I'm so sorry you two have gone through so much hurt. Let's get you and your father out for some fun times this weekend. Get that positive energy flowing again. Sounds good. Okay. See you around, Sal. Okay, now let's go into Larry's room. I guess I have time to play a quick game of Clumpy before I meet up with Larry and Todd.
Oh, okay, I figured it out. did it. Clumpy the mutant monkey. Whew, I did it. Yeah, suck it, mutant flies. Whew, okay. That took a lot longer than I really thought it would. Whoops, whoops. So now, 202. Hi, Bob. It's Bob. Oh, what's this? What's the new gadget? Oh, you aren't supposed to see that yet. It was going to be a surprise. What is it? Among other things, it's a portable amplifier with custom effects that can be used to upgrade your guitar. That's amazing! Todd, you're a genius. I can't wait to try it on. Try it out. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait a while. There are still a few parts I'm waiting on in the mail. Besides, we have more important things to focus on at the moment. Right. Are you ready? Yep. I've tapped into the security cameras and we'll be able to loop footage of the empty hallway until you two get back. Be careful. Got it. Nice. We should go quick before she gets back. Dude, it smells like butt in here. Butt and old feet. Good lord. We better make this a short visit. I can't take that stench for too long. Check out that painting. What if Packerton really does just work on a farm? I don't know. That painting gives, gives me a weird feeling. Like a cold chill. Whoa, yeah. I feel it too. Let's look around. Let's see. Anything strange in the fridge? No, looks like normal groceries and stuff. But there's a padlock on the freezer. Can you get it open? Yeah, just give me a minute. There's a big thing of diapers. Do you think Mrs. Packerton uses them for herself? Probably, dude. Packerton is ancient. Got it! Alright, let's open it up. Oh my gosh. I knew it! It is goats! I called that man! Also, gross. I feel like it can't be that simple. Let's see if we can get into those bedrooms. Alright. Let's see this. Oh dear. Uh... Hi, little buddy. Bae. Bae bae bae. Bae. What was that? A ghost goat, apparently. 
That probably shouldn't be surprising to me at this point, but I definitely did not see that coming. Okay. What else is here? Ah, oh, the radio. Oh, okay. So it looks like the radio activated this clock. If I changed it to anything else. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Okay. Change the time. Uh, so, apparently the goat gave us the clue. It bad once, and then twice, then once, then twice. Alright. Huh. That unlocked the first bedroom. Let's check it out. Bedroom one. There's someone in here! Uh... Uh, hello? Uh, Mr. Packerton? Hello? I don't think he hears you. You're right. Looks like he's in some kind of vegetative state. Man, this is messed up. And definitely where that rancid smell is coming from, too. Yuck. Let's get a quick look around and then get out of here. All of these papers are talking about the death of Mr. Packerton. If he's dead, then who's laying in that bed? What I want to know is why are there so many dump-filled diapers in here? Like seriously, what the heck? I know what you mean. This apartment is making me super nauseous. You don't think she uses the- No. No. Never mind. I don't even want to think about that. I think if the mystery ingredient was human poop, Todd would have seen some signs of that in the lab, right? I guess so. Well, honestly, I have no idea. Let's just hurry up in here. Yeah, exactly why. You shouldn't just be using any teachers as the lunch meat at school. Blech. Blech. Hey, Sally Face, this sure is a terrible situation, isn't it? Huh? That's horrible. <laughs> oh, gosh. Young child, please help me. How can you be? Are you dead? I am in between, suffering for what seems like an eternity. Oh, did Miss Packerton do this to you? We were in, once, in love once, or so I thought. Yes, this is her doing. Please, you must help me escape the endless agony. What's in the baloney? <laughs> baloney? I'm afraid I don't know much about that. This room is my prison. My tomb of infinite sorrow. I can never leave in this state. How can I help you? You must unplug this horrible machine. But isn't that... Wouldn't that... It will end my suffering. It will free me of this torment. But... Are you sure? Please, child. I beg of you. You must hurry before she returns. Pull the plug. <sighs> yeah, let's do it. I hope that was the right thing to do. You didn't have a choice, man. That poor guy was in so much pain. It's what he wanted. Yeah, I guess so. I just... Oh no, she's back! Quick, behind that dresser! If we don't make it out alive, I... I love you, dude. I love you too, man. You're the best friend I've ever had, you know? Same to you, little bud. Hey! 
Hey, sorry to ruin the moment, but what is this place? <laughs> Ashley, you scared the crap out of us. I can see that. Huh, man, am I glad to see you, Ash. I thought we were done for. I thought you had to watch Benjamin. My dad came home early, so I rode over here straight away. Sorry for giving you guys a scare. I... Is that... Mr. Packerton? Is he... It was him. He's gone now. He's finally at peace. Damn. And please don't tell me this is what's going into the baloney. I hope not. I'm not sure. There's still one room we haven't looked in yet. We need to get in there before we leave. Oh, check this out. While we were hiding, I found this key ring under the dresser. One of these keys has to open has to open that other bedroom. Let's check it out. Anything to get out of this room. We're in. What in the... Oh my god. This can't be good. Uh. Uh, okay. I feel like this blood spatter on this side is, uh, the code. Um. Oh, okay. Okay. It looks like maybe the... That was a Morse code looking up there. Corresponds to the freezer. So let's see. That, I think that first one is one. The second one, actually, let me just, okay. Okay, so this one is, it's one, this is four, this is one, and this is three. Oh, we were in way over our heads here. We need to get help. There are no bones. What? There aren't any bones in here. It's all just meat. Dude, no, come on. <laughs> Ash is right. We should get help. Don't you see? There is no one who can help us. Every time something happens here, it's covered up. The cult? Luke? Charlie? Mrs. Sanderson? Who knows what else this place has hidden? We can't trust the cops and we can't tell our parents because they'll want to go to the police. They haven't believed anything we've told them about. Then what do we do? I don't know, man. Things just keep getting worse. Packerton's chopping people up and... Serving them to- Oh, I don't think I'll ever look at Baloney the same again. Well? Well what? You asked why, I don't eat the Baloney and I've told you why. Oh right, this is the reason why he didn't like Baloney! Of all the fantastical stories you like to spin, you're really not going to tell us what happened next? Why bother? You probably don't believe what I've set up until now anyways, and the story just gets more unbelievable from this point. Plus, you're probably going to cut it up to make me sound like a lunatic on TV. Give us the rest of the story and we'll air it in, we'll air it in its entirety. Without cuts. I promise you. I heard you mention Todd Morrison's name before we started. Did you visit him? They won't tell me anything here. Yes, we shot a segment on him yesterday. Is he okay? 
Is he still in the hospital? I'll tell you what, you finish the baloney story and I'll tell you about Todd. Before we left Mrs. Packerton's room, Ash noticed something else. Hey guys, come look at this. There's some kind of trash chute hiding behind that painting. That's weird. This building doesn't have trash chutes. It doesn't look like it goes outside. There's no light coming in. Be careful, Ash. I wonder where it leads. Ash, didn't we say be careful? Ash! Ash! Are you okay? Ash! Oh no, no, this can't be happening. Please let her be okay. We have to find where this leads to. How are we? What are we? I'm gonna shimmy down. It's the only way. Dude, no! You're not thinking straight. What if you fall too? Or land on her? If she's still alive, that could kill her. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's think. I know where it goes. What? How? Never mind. Just go get Todd and meet me in the basement. What's going on? Sal, what did you see? Is Ashley alright? Everything is going to be okay. Come help me with this. No one has used this apartment in a long time. It's in rough shape, but Addison can't afford the renovations it needs. Just like the fifth floor. Is this what you saw in your visions? Oh. <clears throat> Is this what you saw in your vision, Sal? It doesn't work exactly like that. It's more like a feeling of heightened intuition. Alright, you lead the way. Larry and I will offer support however we can. It's locked. Wait, one of those keys from Packerton's look like the old apartment keys. Try that out. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about those. Perfect. There's nothing in here. Give me a minute to look around. Bedroom one, bedroom two. A weird sink. I guess that means the bathroom is this way. Okay, so that's the bathroom. Let's start in the bedrooms. Let's start over here. Carpet. The carpet is torn up here. It looks like... Hmm. Guys! Come check this out! Dude. There must be an undocumented sub-basement level. It's definitely not in any of the blueprints that I've seen. Perhaps an old dirt cellar or something of the like. I had no idea this was here. The third key from Mrs. Packerton's fits in this door. Ash must be down there. It's the only place that shoot could lead to. Let's go. Well, this looks bad. Incredible. This architecture must date back multiple centuries at least. Centuries of blood and demon worship. This is freaky. Everything is created in a coated in a thick layer of dust, which likely means the area is presently vacant and has been for a while. 
Let's hope that the malevolent history of this place remains in the past. Yeah. Well, we need to get through that gate somehow. There appears to be an absence of any obvious mechanisms to remove to move the large gate. They must be built into the walls. It's likely that the apparatus for opening the gate is hidden. We better split up and search the room. Okay. There's other stuff here, but what's over here? Okay, something here. We've got a light bulb. Can I use it on here? Okay. Oh, here we go. Maybe there's another one on the other side. Yep. Dude, those the little <laughs> Dude, those little obelisk thingies just got bigger. Scope it out. Intriguing. These green lights seem to be part of a larger system. Once activated, their energy is transferred into the floor below. Additionally, they must be harnessing the same type of energy as the Super Gear Boy emits, since you were able to trigger them with it. What do you think that means? To be honest, I'm not totally sure. This technology isn't like anything I've dealt with before. However, it is likely that these things were used for something supernatural, perhaps even to summon the Red-Eyed Demon. It's a good thing the cult isn't around anymore. The demon, too. After we find Ash, we should smash everything anyways, just in case. Actually, I'd like to study some of these things further. It may prove useful in some way. Eh. Okay, Todd, whatever you say. Okay, what's this way? Okay. Wait, what? Oh wait, there must be something over here, I think. No. Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Okay. It's empty. Oh, wait. Another letter. Ha-ha! Thank you, walk through. Okay, that's page nine. Tragedy prevails once again. We lost the baby. Stillborn. Lisa's devastated. She hasn't said much and hasn't left the bedroom in a few days. I tried my best to explain to Larry, but he's so young that he doesn't fully understand. He's angry at us because he thinks we lied to him about getting a baby sister. Our happy family has this giant crack in it now. Well, that's what it feels like at least. Seeing Lisa so isolate seeing Lisa so isolated is making this even harder to bear. I hate seeing her in a in pain like this. It breaks my heart. I'm sitting in the car with the groceries. It's freezing, but I let the cold take me. Addison Apartments, the small five-story brick building protruding from the dark forest looming over me. I want to scream, why? Why do I deserve this? But I am not so self-centered to think that the universe owes me anything. The only thing for me to do now is be there for my family as we attempt to crawl out from this hole. Okay, let's go back. At some point, yeah, there we go. An old leather-bound book with a symbol of a goat's head on the cover. The text is written in another language, and the pages smell like rotten flesh. This book gives me an oddly strong sensation of deja vu. Oh. Okay. Wait, what? Oh. Nope. The gate is opened. 
So much just to open the gate. Dude! What? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? That scared me. Sorry. I got the gate open for a second, but that switch won't stay down. Todd, can you come stand on this? Larry and I can go find Ash while you make sure we don't get locked in. Sure. I can do that. Why did I sound like Larry just now? Ready? No, but Ash is in there somewhere, so let's go. Be safe. Be safe, you two. I don't want to lose anyone else down here. Looks like there are two ways. We better split up. I was afraid you were going to say that. Ooh, I'm Larry. Why do these things always happen to me? Ooh, I'm Larry. Okay. Crap. This place is like a maze. Okay. There's this door, this door, and then this door. I just enter one. No. Still three doors. Still three doors. Hmm. Something this way, apparently. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh? Not sure what that did. Okay. Um. Okay, back to the room. Now we'll enter this door over here. Okay. Door. Huh. What? Okay. Is there a way to start this over? Okay. What? Do I have to like just leave and then come back? No. <laughs> just not figure it out. Okay. Three. Four. Five. Four. Three. Four. Three. One. Okay. I don't know how I would have gotten that. I had to look at the walkthrough. Wait. Was there anything over here? No. Nope. Nothing here either. Oh, I'm Sally. Oh, 
Okay, I can hear a faint sound. I don't think I hear anything. Okay, yeah. I hear from this one. I don't hear from this one. Okay. Middle door. Yeah, I hear something. I don't think I hear anything. I hear something. Don't hear anything. Was that it? Secret room? Hello, where are you? Oh, yes. Okay. Same deal. I think I heard something move in the next room. No. No. Yes. Okay. An old book with a wooden cover. There's a solid black circle carved into the front that's made from a different type of wood. The frail green pages are covered in painted symbols. I can't make any sense of it, but it leaves a little it leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. Oh, the buttons again. Oh, there's a door over here. I hath awaited thy arrival, young sire. Me? You have? Yes. The boatman has foretold of the one who hath the power to ignite necrolites without the performing of rituals. I hate to break it to you, guy, but I don't think I'm part of your bold mint thingamajig or whatever. This is just a video game system. My friend Todd modified it to produce a surge of electricity. I don't have any magical powers or anything. Twas ye who is did summon I. And without the sacred texts, tis you I hath waited. This I am certain of. My time here is brief, so I must fulfill my obligation. Prithee, taketh this letter. May the gods bless thee with a safe journey and the courage and strength for what lies ahead. What lies ahead? Every time. Another journal page. Here we go. Here we go. Page 10. Okay. Last night, I had the most horrible nightmare. There was a man in the shadows, standing on a pile of bodies. He whispered to me. He was trying to tell me something, but I couldn't make out any of his words. I looked down at my feet and realized I was standing in a pool of blood. The entire ground was blood, and beyond that was simply darkness. A bony, cold hand grasped my shoulder. As I turned around, a familiar face came into focus. It was Rosenberg, though she looked skewed and her eyes were sunken in, like a zombie that had risen from the dead. When she opened her mouth, maggots poured out. Her tongue smacked against her gums and lips as she spoke. Her words again continued to haunt me even after waking. If you do not join us, everything you love will wither and die. The moment she spoke, I saw Larry and Lisa's twisted corpses. Today, I decided to finally meet with Rose. She revealed to me an old temple that rests below this very building. A small group of people meet here to carry on the traditions of an ancient society. They believe in an archaic magic that seems dark and unnatural. I wouldn't have believed any of this if not for the fact that I've witnessed its power firsthand. Yet what they call magic, I believe it to be something else. A thought that frightens me, but I must delve deeper to uncover the truth. The journey I'm about to embark on may be the last thing I do. But I must do everything I can to protect my family from the unseen darkness. <laughs> okay. What were you up to, uh, Larry's dad? Okay. 
three, four, five. Four, three, four, three, one. Phew. Um, no, wait, do I just... Hey, good timing. I think we have to pull these levers at the same time to open that gate. We must have walked around in a big circle. The room behind that gate is in the center of this place. It's the last room. Ash has to be back there. Huh? Hmm. I think this weird hex thing from Mrs. Pack Packerton's desk is some kind of key. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, the last letter. It's the last journal page. All right, let's read it. Sal, please read this journal I've kept over the past years so that you will begin to understand what is at stake. I know Lisa and Larry must hate me for leaving, but please know that I have loved them and love them still beyond anything else in life. And that is the very reason I had to leave, to protect them. You are a good man, Sal, and I'm glad that you and Larry will form a strong kinship. This must seem very strange to you, and I haven't got much time to explain everything. In short, there are forces at work here that are far beyond imagination. I've seen glimpses of the future. I've seen glimpses of the past. Now, I must play the role I was meant to play. I will sacrifice my life for those I love. To put an end to this madness. To stop the dreadful darkness that persists in this world. You must never reveal the truth to Larry or Lisa. They will only go digging for answers and that would put them in great danger. Please, Sal, you must protect them for me. They are your family and that makes you my family too. I'm sorry your life has been filled with tragedy and I'm sorry to say that there is more misfortune awaiting you. But you are destined to play an important role in all of this. In time, everything will be clear. Sincerely, Jim Johnson. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Ash! Ash, are you okay? Ash? Is she... She's still breathing. Come on, help me get her up. Huh? She's awake! What- what's going on? Where- where are we? Dude, you fell down the stupid trash chute! I thought we lost you for good! I'm so glad we found you. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Just a little fuzzy and sore. No broken bones. Well, none of mine at least. <laughs> Man, Ash, you wouldn't believe what we went through to find you. It's all thanks to Sally. He had one of his vision thingies, and then he found this old cellar door in the basement, and then we went down these long, creepy stairs, and then we found this crazy cult temple or something down here. Then there were all these puzzles and traps and mazes, and... Todd! Todd is holding the front gate open for us. We should go back there. Wow, this is so much to take in. I can't believe all of this is right below the apartments. Thanks for coming for me. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. So what are we going to do about all of this? Mrs. Packerton has killed a lot of people. And the baloney? 
Oh, we we can't, can't just ignore this. Definitely not. Judging by what you guys have told me about the inner rooms of the temple and about Mrs. Packerton's apartment, it could be possible that she's gotten herself wrapped up in the occult as well. Even if the congregation has long since dissolved, she could have stumbled upon this door, just as we have. Or maybe she's the last remaining member, trying to carry out whatever their plans were on her own. You don't think she's trying to bring the red-eyed demon back, do you? Hopefully not, but we will be prepared if she does. Man, we need to stop her. Preferably, like, before that happens. I know going to the local police isn't an option. Maybe we should call the state police or the FBI or something. At least this time our parents can't deny what's happening. They'll help us once we show them what's below this building and what Packerton has been doing. Ash is right. We should get our parents involved this time. Maybe we should just kill her. What? Mrs. Packerton. Maybe she, we should just kill her. She's so She's old, so it shouldn't be that hard. We can't just kill someone, Larry. Then we'd be no better than her. Normally, I would be against harming others, but in this case, Larry might be right. Todd! Larry! Seriously, you guys? Think about all of the strange, unexplainable occurrences that happen in Addison Apartments and in Knockfell in general. The more I think about it, the less likely it becomes that Mrs. Packerton is acting alone. Acting alone. She must be getting outside help. It would explain the police cover-ups of Charlie and the Holmes family murders. There's no telling how far this corruption reaches. Darn. I guess that makes sense. Sal, you were saying something similar earlier today, too. I don't know, maybe this does fall on us to take care of. Maybe. You know, the biggest worries normal teenagers have are about petty things like being popular and having nice hair. Not us, though. We just have to worry about saving the world, I guess. So what happened? We decided to sleep on it. It was nearly morning anyway, and everyone was beyond exhausted. And the teacher? What did you decide? Did you go to the police? Didn't have to. Turns out Packerton got into a car accident on the way home, that same night. She and the other driver were killed on impact. Wow, that's quite convenient. You can look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. It was on the front page the next day. Beloved Knockville High, high, bleh. beloved Knockville High teacher killed by drunk driver. Of course, you won't find anything about the dead bodies in her apartment or how she was feeding the students human flesh. That was all covered up. Ah, see. I don't care if you don't believe me. It's the truth, and you said you would air the full story. Don't worry, Sal. It will be aired in full. I always keep my word, and I think the people will be very interested in what you have to say. Everyone is watching you right now. You spoke with a great fondness about your friend Ashley. I understand that you two were very close. You even considered her one of your best friends, along with Larry Johnson and Todd Morrison. Is that true? Yes. Have you seen this? <gasps> Ashley Campbell to testify against the Sally Face Killer. The Sally Face Killer trial today for mass murder, including entire family. Oh no. What about Todd? You said you'd tell me about Todd. Oh, right. Of course. We shot a segment on Morrison yesterday. He's still in the hospital after what happened that night. He's still out of it. Unresponsive. Nah, still not talking. So we couldn't have a conversation with him. We mostly spoke with his doctor. I'm sorry, Sal. Apparently Morrison hasn't shown any signs of improvement. In fact, his condition has been getting worse. They say that the damage he suffered that night is irreversible. Wow. He doesn't know fantasy from reality and all he wants is to die. He looks just like his dad. When he is denied the release of death, he becomes extremely violent. 
I, I need to help him. Somehow, I need to help him. Even the doctors and the trained professionals haven't been able to help Todd. How do you suppose that you'll be able to? Because I know the truth. I know what really happened. I know what's wrong with Todd. Okay, so it looks like that was the end of episode three, so it was a bit of a lengthier one since there were multiple parts, but um, yeah, should be interesting. Looking forward to seeing what the next two episodes have to offer in future episodes, so I'll see you in the next one.